Well, hello and welcome to the Pap Laszlo Arena in Budapest, in Hungary. Semi-finals day here at the Women's European Handball Championships. Paul Bray with you for this fifth place playoff game between hosts Hungary and France. It's the curtain raiser to the two semi-finals that come up later at the end of the day. It's an all Scandinavian affair, Norway, Sweden. And then after this game, though, it'll be Montenegro against Spain, who will be first. So the teams being introduced, France coming out first. Camille Eglon. There's Alison Pino, who will be key today, the playmaker, who plays in Slovenia for Krim Ljubljana. Had a hot and cold competition so far. Landry, one of the new players. Zadi, a newcomer to the team as well, just 21 years of age. It's Provencier, the only right winger in the team, but actually hasn't been played a lot. They've been playing right backs there instead. There is Amandine Leno, 28 year old veteran of 143 internationals, but only just recovered from injury, which is just as well because uh, the other choice keeper, Cleopat Darleu, was unavailable. Well, uh, just before we continue with that, here is the uh, Hungarian team, though, arriving. Nemet, the coach, we just saw Maya. Line play has been so impressive here in the competition. Of course, all these teams have had to come across, in the case of France, coming in from Zagreb. Here they are arriving. I mean, yesterday morning, while for the uh, Hungarians, well, they had a three-hour bus journey from the east of the country in Debrecen. Very subdued looking French team and uh, different uh, reactions from both sides to this fifth place playoff. The Hungarians now coming out. It's Havanus Arena. Much wilder reaction all round as they come through. The well, Hungarians celebrated wildly when they beat Norway in their last uh, main round match to qualify for this playoff. France, for their part, looked utterly dejected, having thrown away their semi final place in a disastrous main round. Uh, Shora Her coming out there, goalkeeper who's uh, not had the best of runs in fairness. And uh, has been superseded by Eva Kish. And here she is. She's had a phenomenal competition, 41% save rate, including three penalties. So Bodhi come in, that's Sabina Meyer playing in her first major competition. She's been phenomenal, 13 from 16. This is Planeta, another one of the new players. 21 years of age, the right back only. And Mesa Rush, another in her first major competition. Five of them, in fact, in this lineup of uh, 16 are playing their first. It's not her first, though. 133 caps for Monika Kovacic, the right winger, 309 goals. Temes, she was uh, brought in in the main round to replace Erdoshi and big cheer for Zuzana Tomori. He's taken over from uh, Gurbitz as captain of the team after Gurbitz announced that she was expecting a baby and wouldn't be playing with the team here. And the last one out, Gabriela Tot, who I think has been one of the big revelations of the tournament. The uh, playmaker brought in in the main round to replace Clevigny and she scored 11 goals. Referees being introduced now, an experienced pairing of Yiri Opava and Pavel Valek of the Czech Republic. Officiated at uh, Men's World Championships in 2009, Euro 2010 for the women, and Euro 2012 as well in Serbia two years ago. Now the table officials being introduced. Monika Hagen on the right, Josip Pozavec on the left. Chef representatives in the uh, hall also getting uh, their mention. The crowd still making their way in for this game. Big arena, 12,500 seats. So it is now time for the national anthems, starting with France. Well, the French flags come forward, so we have a quick change. It's Hungary first.
Hungary determined to go out on a high here in Budapest. And now the anthem of France. The anthem's over, teams will wheel round. 11 meetings in official competition between these teams. Hungary have won seven, France four. This is the lineup for Hungary. We'll look out for the goalkeeper, Kish, who's been on fine form. Veteran back players, those Ushansky and Tomori, will need to be at their best. But it's the new players who've also impressed. And this is one of them, Gabriela Tot. 11 goals in 65 percent success rate on her shooting she's just 18 years of age and what a revelation she's been here for France well, they've replaced a couple of players but Pino will still be key she's got to play at her best today Nyombla as well but La Carber has been the player who has uh, stood out in the picture now 34 goals a 50 percent success rate and 13 assists for the 27 year old who plays for Nice Unfortunately, she couldn't do it all single-handedly. She's probably been the most consistent of the French players in the competition. And there is Nemet in the background, the coach, who has taken his team to this fifth-place playoff. Hungary, who were third two years ago at Euro 2010. A bit of a surprise then. Last meeting between these two teams was, in fact, at Euro 2010. When Hungary beat France 21-18 in the preliminary stages. For France, two players replaced. Goalkeeper Glozer returns to the team after a two-game break. Takes her place back from Atangre, while left-back Marie-Francois has come in for right-back Niabouillou, Alain Porte, turning the bench and giving some other players a little bit of experience. It's nothing to do with injuries, we're told by the team. Porte, who's uh, took over from Olivier Krumholz, a long-standing coach of the team. And there's Eva Kisch. Had such a, an incredible uh, competition, 41% save rate. And Lino will start at the other end for France, a 36% save rate. And it's fair to say that uh, Hungary have felt the absence of Gurbitz, but they have all stepped up to the mark under the new captain, Zuzana Tomori. And so Hungary in the all-red strip throw off this fifth-place playoff, playing from right to left, France in the all-white strip today. France, this uh, starts with a 6-0 defence, but it gets very deep. They push out and they harass the players at the back. And, uh, the Hungarians trying to spread it quickly from side to side to pull the defence, but at the moment it's looking very deep. Maya, oh, straight through the legs of the keeper. 26-year-old playing in a first major competition. Kamto has picked up a yellow card for that. Sadly for the uh, Hungarians, all they come away with is a uh, free throw. So they've started with Gabriela Tot, number 96 in the middle, number the 18-year-old, who's uh, been so impressive, called up to replace Clivigny in the main round as they struggled to find some balance at the back, and uh, she's been fantastic. Bulat, who's actually getting better as the competition goes on. She was hugely expensive early on, but is improving match by match. She has 11 goals, the number 10 for Hungary. So the attack for France. Well, they don't start with Pino in the middle. They've started instead with Nyombla shifting from left back into the center. And La Carbert, well, she's a given at right back with her consistency. Canto out and back in again. Dembele comes in. And the uh, crossover move completely spoiled as uh, Pino had moved off to the left. Ah! Just didn't quite pay attention and Bulat 
lost track of Dembele, the winger, who'd come in behind. So the change of Pino from centre to left, well, that would be the penalty anyway, so a shooting arm was taken. Two minutes played. Tot, Maya comes out and drops back in again. Bulat cuts out to uh, Tomori's too closely. Mark, Maya. Tot, the provider. Maya finishes it. France come back very quickly. Ah, oh, superb feed by uh, Lacrabert. It's easy when you know how. Puts the ball into Provencier, the uh, only right winger on the French roster. Goal at the other end by uh, Maya, but a quick response. A crossover, Zuzana Tomori. Every time she comes away, though, she's being closely marked. That'll be a free throw. Solid defence in the middle. No way through for Tomori, who scored 26 goals, so 46% efficiency, but also has 17 assists. Penalty, Diva defending inside the area. And uh, Maya is proving to be an absolute handful for the French defence in the middle. All 87 kilos of her. Quick turn. Aiglon's picked up a yellow card in the process. So up steps Tristchuk, scored 18 from 21 penalties in the competition. And a touch by Lino, but it wasn't enough. Enough power on it by uh, Tristchuk to go all the way through. Give a bit of a friction burn on the hand. Tristchuk, Russian born, was only naturalized just in time to play at Euro 2012 when they took bronze a couple of years back in Serbia. Oh, lovely turn. It's good defending by Hungary, but some. Uh, Flashes of excellence by France in the pace with which they are turning inside and out. I don't think they'll hear you, Alain. Trying to put the ball back. Play on, says the referee. Oh, looking for the line, but it went straight through. Kish puts it in play once more. Tomori. Tot. Bulat. Tomori cuts towards the middle. Tot. Straight into the keeper. Had to get up quick. The back spin was on it. Not a bad uh, attempt. So for France, then Provencier in the right wing, who, despite being the only uh, left handed right wing on their listings, only played an hour and 12 minutes in the competition. Instead, Alain Porte has used a succession of right backs, taking turns in there. It's uh, an unusual decision as Nyombla hammers one away. Lovely little sidestep around Boulat. Saros, not to give Bulat a uh, bad press. Ending off. Kovacic comes around, she drops back into the wing now, trying to find the line. This time it's stolen, and Dembele will uh, try and overtake around the other side. She's got it back. Good save by Kish. And there was no power, there was no explosion in that shot. It was almost a pedestrian shove into the goal by Dembele. Meanwhile, quick attack by the uh, Hungarians has come to nothing. Play on, say the referees from the Czech Republic. Crowd think it should be stopped. It's gone wide and finally they do stop play as Tot is rolling in agony at the far end from the last attack. Quick look why, releases the ball, and that doesn't look good because there was no obvious clash, and it's one of those usually where you find the injuries worse. The ligament goes, or Nemeth pacing. Hungary, who uh, started without uh, Anita Gurbits. Who's their manager, Katalin Palingo. She looks familiar, veteran of 248 internationals for Hungary in goal, but. Uh, Got be, it's a huge amount of experience to lose in one go. 204 internationals, 997 goals, but uh, she is expecting a baby. 
And so Tomori stepped in, that was the earlier goal. The Hungarians have played with uh, a mixture of uh, experience and youth. Unfortunately, one of the uh, youthful players has just gone off and uh, so in her place comes Bernadette Temes, who only came in for the final match in the main round, uh, what will now be famous victory against the Norwegians. The only defeat suffered by the Scandinavians in the competition, albeit uh, aided somewhat by a flu bug in the Norwegian camp, but to take nothing away from uh, Hungary, who played a very good game and uh, rode on a crest of passion in a packed hall in Debrecen. Tomori! Oh, lovely! Wonderful accuracy. Maya putting a good block on the line along with the winger and it's 3-3 coming up to seven minutes played so France have now brought on Nzeminko, one of their new players with just one international before the uh, European Championships. Well, Provence goes in on the line, Lacrabert is fouled. Quick switch, there's no space in the wing though. Good width on the defence for... Uh, Oh, brilliant take, Lacrabea one-handed at the pass, a long way behind her, but somehow managed to pick it out of the air. Stole it under the arm of Zushansky and puts it under the keeper, brilliant. Well, it's fair to say she's been a class act, Lacrabea. Oh, hammer blow, Bullard. Well, if Gaal won't work, take the direct route. Bullet shot straight through the middle. 4-4. Four, four. She's still showing us her muscles. Finger impersonation of Mr. Atlas on the far side. Far from over yet. Eight minutes played. La Crabère starts the crossover, but not needed. Pino lets rip. Uh, the year uh, 2009... France came into the uh, main round with uh, an enviable uh, track record with the long-range shooting, but it all went off the boil in the main round, unfortunately, for them. Oh, right in the corner by Bulat. Her second. France's long-range shooting coming back again. Straight through again. Nziminko. Goal for goal here in Budapest. Tomori tried to get in the way to no effect. Well, Hungary drew their opening game against Russia, then beat Poland, which effectively booked their main round ticket before losing to Spain. That was all in the preliminary group in Jur. They then uh, get a free throw for France. They then beat Romania, hard fought game. Oof, attacking foul. Well, I'm surprised because she got shoved into the defender and Bot, quite right, to look absolutely bemused. Look at this, there's the shove. And no wonder she's crashed into Kovacic. She was expedited there and Bot having a word with the referee. You do realize what you just did. <laughs> He's very clever, he points to one and he goes, that was a very good call over there, it looks like. And they say, oh, by the way, rubbish down there. Look at this. How can you call that an attacking foul? There was still daylight in front of her as well. Bart, who was a, a great winger in his own day, knows all about that. And the Czech uh, Republic referees being sold a bit of a dummy there. So back to Hungary then. A win against Romania was followed by a defeat to Denmark. And they had to win their last game against the undefeated Norwegians in the last main round match to uh, just get into the fifth place playoff and they were desperate for it and they won 29-25. France's story quite different, they emerged triumphant from uh, Group D in Osijek in Croatia with victories over Slovakia, a demolition of Serbia including <laughs> conceding just three goals in the first half of that match and then uh, victory over the defending champions Montenegro, that team's only defeat but unfortunately went completely off the boil in the main round.
They just needed to win a couple of games to be absolutely certain. Instead, they lost to Sweden, France in the main round, drew with Germany, and that was effectively it for them. The final win against the Netherlands was uh, irrelevant after they'd missed out. La Traversot goes sailing over the barn. We're past the 10-minute mark, though. Meanwhile, back here in Budapest for this fifth-place playoff and two quick succession saves by uh, Amandine Leno. 28-year-old French keeper who plays in uh, Macedonia for Vardar Skopje alongside uh, France's left winger Dembele. So change on the line for France. Lorissa Landré, another one of their new finds from Le Havre. Five internationals and 11 goals for France only. And France are finding a way through. Hungary don't look quite awake in defence as Pino gives France a two-goal lead. They're pushing out, but it's not cohesive enough as they do so. No one closes behind Bulat Strander, then it's not really her fault. She's got a line play on one side and Pino is storming in on the other. 70% shot efficiency for France, which is excellent. Hungary 56%, which actually, on average in a game, is about right. Bulat says that was high by Pino. And the referee says, well, I can't do too much about it because Alain Porte's watching me now <laughs> after that last decision on the attacking foul. So for the Hungary, Tristchuk has come in number five. Oh, that's nice. And the French left the door wide open. And Temesh scores her first goal of Euro 2014, having come into the team only for the last game. Lovely athleticism and once more Bulat on the end of a non-existent defence. Look at the height she takes and then turns her body. She's so high that she manages to turn and settle herself in. Got a uh, Larissa Landry, newcomer, used predominantly in uh, in defence. Oof! Nearly gave the ball away, Bulat. Oh, off the foot of the keeper, then off the post, but stays out. Fourth save for her. Lacabert cuts back inside. Pino. Back to Nzé, Lacrabert to the line. Oh, some superb play by France. Landré. Landré, who's uh, only had five shots in the entire competition, scored all five of them, mind you. France had played this kind of handball in their opening two games in the main round, it would have been a completely different story. Against Germany in particular, they completely self-destructed. Deep defence coming in now, but uh, Maya's found a way through it. She's inside the area, but it's a penalty. Fouled in the act of shooting by Camille Yeglon. Defence specialist from Nîmes. Well, in fact, in fairness, it's Pino who's more at fault than anybody else. Although Iglon should have either been on the line player or stopping the back player. Tristchuk. Nice and simple. Her second penalty. a 100% record, the 29-year-old who plays for Dunos Varos. Fifth in the Hungarian league. Landry to La Crabère. Drives in a bit further to make sure the defender comes back. And again, wonderful feed into the line. Time and again, though, Landry is getting the ball back in very quick one-twos. Pino, she's looking the other way. And uh, Tot is back on now. Just didn't close her down. So midway through the first half, France leading 10-7 here in Budapest in this curtain raiser to the semi-finals. 
fifth place playoff we wondered whether France would be able to pick themselves up mentally after well you have to say it's throwing away their chance of going through to the semi-final with a lackluster main round but they have a workmanlike performance here by the French with the uh, touches of brilliance thrown in Trischuk gets a free throw tries to take on both Inglung and uh, Nziminko with no success. Last French win between these teams. Well, they haven't played since Euro 2010 when uh, Hungary won, but they met three months before that in a friendly tournament. And France did win. And Trischuk this time scores an open play shot. And Iglon again, slow to go out, gave her the space, and she was able to come all the way in at eight metres. France hit back quickly, though. Courtesy of Nziminko. To sidestep and straight through. Nziminko plays for Nantes. Scores three. 23 years of age. And, uh, and he just played in the uh, pre Euro tournament. First internationals. Too many steps by Tot. Well. Not sure if that was intended by the French, but she took three steps and uh, Iglo actually stepped aside and almost offered her the space. Oh, penalty. Would have been anyway, but that should be a two-minute suspension. Landry has scored, but her arm pulled from behind as she was shooting. I'm afraid Tot may be on the bench. Terrible foul. So there, don't try and foul them anymore. Bulat has got away with a yellow card for a shove, but uh, Tot considered more fortunate. Team timeout hungry. Többségében nem jövünk fel, ott hagyjuk folyamatosan a beállót, teljesen szabadon, arról jövünk le, hát nem kell, akkor próbáljuk meg hátul maradni inkább, ha már vészhelyzet van, akkor hátul maladni. Szélekről még nem kaptunk volt, ott álltuk a szélén, tessék betolni a falat a szélsők, jöjjenek föl, akarjanak faltot csinálni, főleg lemegy a labda a sarokba, azok meg meg faltokat, több faltot. A következő van, akkor úgy fogunk védekezni, hogy akkor a... a, a Trish van, kettes, akkor hármasban még a Reával, ide jön az Ita és több faltot. Szemerítsünk és segítsünk a lány! Szemerítsünk és segítsünk a lány! On va essayer d'alterner en défense. 1-5 et 0-6. Soyez pas trop ambitieuse pour... Dans un premier temps, par contre, quand vous voyez l'enclenchement, c'est bien de dissuader comme ça. Après, quand elles ont enclenché, si vous pouvez penser à dissuader les passes au pivot par des mouvements de bras, ça les perturbe pas mal quand même, d'accord well well I think that's a, a nine out of ten I think uh, teachers report at 17 minutes by him good defense good attack keep it going looking good and Ziminko confirms her fourth from four attempts and France slowly imposing their authority on the game as Ziminko scores past Blanca Biro who's replaced Kish in goal Kish has managed just one save from 13 shots in the game at odds with uh, the wonderful uh, performance she's had throughout the tournament as Bulat puts in another hammer shot bit too much room Pino got to her slowly they know it's coming when she's running in like that she's got that look on her face and France who the women's team have won one title it was a world championship in 2003 and as it happens it was against Hungary it showed the frailty of Hungary on that occasion because uh, Hungary was seven goals up with seven minutes remaining in that final in Croatia and France leveled the score with a penalty right on the buzzer and then went on to win the match in extra time. Good play by Lacrabert who positioned herself right in front of Zushansky and waited for the collision. There it is. And that's an attacking foul by Hungary. 
she knew it was coming but uh, bravery is something that La Crabeur has in bucket loads and uh, will have taken one for the team there coming up to 19 minutes play La Crabeur and Zeminko Save by Biro. 20 year old only in goal. Six internationals. It's gone out of play. France get the throw in. So, one title, a world championship title. They've had uh, three silver medals in the world championship, the most recent being in Brazil in 2011, when they lost to Norway in the final after Pino had been injured in the semi final. Torn a knee ligaments. It's the foul. They'll come back for that. And a couple of uh, bronze medals in the European Championships, 2002 and 2006. For their part, Hungary were European champions in 2000. Most recent title for them. Four goal lead for France, trying to go quickly into the wing. Always come back off a defender. Very closed. Oh, off the woodwork. She thought she was fouled, Provencier. And both teams going through a good transition uh, phase. And the chance of Ria, Ria, Hungaria ring out across the arena. Trying to get their team back in again. We're past the 20 minute mark in Budapest. Oh, looking for the line, Mayer, closely marked, but instead Fristrup was on the other side and uh, picks the ball up and wins the penalty. Defending inside the area as uh, Dembele backed off inside the uh, six-metre area. So change the goalkeeper, in comes Laura Glozer. 21-year-old, first major competition for her, just 10 internationals to her name. 35% save rate in the competition, but no penalties. Tristchuk. Sends her the wrong way. Fourth goal for Tristchuk. Three from the uh, seven-metre line. Continue. Cut back inside. They're almost individually marking the backs. It's paid off. Good burst of 3 3. Oh, brilliant. Aniko Kovacic, 23 year old winger from Giurieto, breaks away. La Caber tried to cover. A little bit of spin on it. And a three goal run by Hungary. They're coming right back at the French. Bench are celebrating. Mehmet. Poker face. On va Team timeout for us. On va mettre le pivot là. Et Poli, tu vas venir ici. C'est la, la 34, je crois, qui va être isolée. OK Ouais, et elles vont venir, c'est sûr. Mais il faut sortir un bon ballon, Alex, et elle va arriver en courant, d'accord Et c'est réel, ça, elle s'enflamme un petit peu. Il faut un petit peu replier. Éviter les rentrées d'arrière, plutôt des ailières qui rentrent. C'est mieux, on est mieux en repli. Ok Allez, on y va. So, a three goal run by France has been uh, followed just as swiftly by a three goal run by Hungary. And the save, Biro. Uh, they've 
but sometimes started slow, the Hungarians, but uh, their fighting spirit is strong. And uh, as they showed against Norway. Oh, big gap. Tomori being right-handed is not in a particularly good position to run straight and shoot. She started running towards the middle, impeded it. That's a block. Oh, and France had gone out for the earlier break. Oh, and another save. Biro. Brilliant save. Nyombla comes away empty handed. Well, suddenly France, having played so well, that's an attacking foul. I've got shades of uh, what they were doing before. Inside, Baudouin and Pino. That's not looking good, feeling her collarbone. So that uh, collision with uh, Tomori, who crashed into her, she won possession. It would be scant consolation if she's been injured in the process. And then Boudouin, who cuts back inside, and there, uh, it's close, but it did look like it, that she'd stepped on the line. France have had these uh, spurts when they've uh, hit the self-destruct button in matches, and uh, they've had these uh, fast breaks that they've wasted, six-meter shots they've wasted. Then they start to panic play and make passes that they need to make. And uh, teams have capitalized on that. The Germans know only too well exactly what happened in that match. Tot. Oh, good save by Lino. France come back again. La Claver quite rightly slows things right down. French number 64. Six and a half minutes without goals, during which time they've conceded three. Well, the crowd are enjoying this again now after France had taken a five goal lead. Hungary straight back in it. Mesa Roche. Great defending by the 20 year old. He's only played five times for a country before Euro 2014 being used in the center of the uh, Hungarian defense. Nyomla. Oh, long range shot, right on the nine meter line. Nyomla, who's playing in her first major competition. Beats Biro finally and uh, brings to an end. Nearly eight minutes without a goal. Oh, Trischuk, straight underneath, low shot. And the goalkeeper didn't see that come till the last second. So still Pino being used as a left back. Gap is there, tried to release it into La Caber, but dispossessed instead to Mori. She's so nearly uh, being dispossessed. Tomori, she had a run in, but instead released the ball. Too many steps. France take it quickly. And another save by Biro. What an entrance she's made. Four saves from six shots. The 20 year old. And Nyombla turns on the uh, theatrics as she's sent off for two minutes, looks to the referee. There's the save first, though. Under a bit of pressure, there was no one to pass to, but well read. And meanwhile, the penalty to be taken by Trischuk. She scores. It's a one goal game again. The Hungarians determined to win this final game in front of the home crowd. Now they came here with their number one goalkeeper, Oishor Aher, 142 internationals placed for the uh, Champions League winners, Giorietto. As uh, Ig, uh, rather Iglon, 
Canto scores a rebound. Restore the two goal lead, but uh, Hungary you found their number one goalkeeper is having a dreadful time. She's made the six saves in the entire competition, 21% save rate. Kish has kind of taken over as the de facto number one now for the Hungarian team, and Biro is the fullback option. And it seems that uh, they always have one who's on blinding form in every match. And Biro proving that once more today. Unusual, in fact, to line up out of your 16 players with three goalkeepers. Oof, that was lucky. I thought that was deflected with the French player having a foot inside the line. Long-range pass and the uh, self-destruct play comes in again. That was a very optimistic pass. Zushansky into the side netting, but she'll get the free throw. 27-year-old, he plays for FTC Budapest. Playing in a home city, and not her home hall. So Hungary have suffered 10 turnovers, France 7. A lot of mistakes here. Oh, nearly stolen, Zushansky's got it though. Oh, Tristchuk, a belting collision. France back to full strength, incidentally. Sporting lift back up again from Kumba Sisse, who's just come in. Went for the ball, but uh, still a crunching tackle. Free throw. We inside the last two minutes before the half-time break. Not much in it here. France seemed to have the better of it for a while, moving into a five-goal lead, but Hungary have been on song since then. Tristchuk, Zushansky couldn't control it, but she's fouled on the process, so she'll win a free throw. That's Sisse right back, although she's been uh, playing right wing quite a lot at this championship. Stolen. Oh, not again. You, you kind of knew she was going to make the pass before it happened. <laughs> it's this panic play mentality again. Just didn't need to do it. Just pull the ball back, but Kamto somehow sends the ball forwards and uh, basically... Uh, Less than a 50-50 chance of reaching its recipient, or intended recipient. We're into the last minute. Come to dispossesses Tomori unfairly. Zushansky starts to run to the middle. Eglon comes up to try and isolate Tomori. Dispossessed. Uh, oh, big angle. Oh, saved. Lino. 30 seconds for France, they've got to bring it up slowly now. Someone uh, wind them down, will they? Oh, deary me. And we've got an injury. Clock's been stopped with uh, 22 seconds remaining. And that's not looking too good. And at the other end, Lino, who made this save here off her face, is still reeling. She's only just returned from uh, injury. While at the other end, well, ironically, Tomori trying to block Dembele slaps her own player, Kovacic, in the face. It's one of those tussles. Tristrup comes over to check. Very slowly, they're getting uh, Monika Kovacic, 31 year old uh, veteran of 133 internationals, back to her feet again as Maya words in her ear from Andras Nemet. Well, she seems okay, uh, Kovacic. Playing a fifth European championship. She's feeling it today. So France, 20 seconds to try and uh, slow down and be a bit more concentrated rather than this panic play. They played brilliant handball for uh, about 18 minutes and have then just gone into uh, Panic mode for some reason. Well, they score courtesy of Nyombla, and that runs the clock down. There's the pass and a nice uh, quick shot. Tomori sitting back and waiting for her. 84 kilometers an hour. Biro could do nothing about it. Well placed. So at half time, then, 
France lead 16-13 in this fifth place playoff against Hungary. We'll take a short break. Join us again in just a few moments. We'll see you then.
So welcome back to the Pap Lazlo Arena in Budapest on semi-finals day. But before we reach the semi-finals, there's a small matter of the fifth place playoff. And at half-time here, France leading 16-13 against the host Hungary, or co-hosts, I should say. This was jointly hosted Euro 2014 by Croatia and Hungary, although Croatia will uh, best want to forget this after they failed to come out of the preliminary stages. Palinga and Nemet, deep in thought. Well, there's uh, plenty going on behind the scenes, and if you want to see the news or read more about the games, get the statistics, see some of the videos from behind the uh, stages, well, then you can go on the webpage. It's ehf-euro.com. You can even join the conversation if you want on Twitter, hashtag ehf-euro2014. So, Lino, first half, six saves from 18 shots taken. Well, uh, Blanca Biro, who's come in for Kish, has made four from eight shots in the just under 13 minutes that she's played. Kish has had a miserable time in goal today after we'd given her that, uh, that big write-up at the beginning. One save from 13 only. But France did start this match very quickly and uh, efficiently, but then had a, an eight-minute spell when they conceded three goals and uh, gave the initiative back briefly to the Hungarians, but they seem to be up and running again and uh, trying to uh, stop that panic play. So, Biro is ready. I think the referees are ready. Here we go with the second half as France throw off. So, Pino still at the left-back position in the centre, Nyombla and La Caber, it's just as they started. Pino, more often not in the central role, she's staying there now and uh, says to Nyombla, you stay over there for a minute. And uh, Boudouin have put in a uh, left winger on the line and that's not lasted long before two minute suspensions come up. Pavel Valek sends off Kiroshka and Samoranski, 28-year-old uh, veteran line player. Plenty of experience, 122 internationals, but that's not helped her just here. So Camto, regular line player, into Boudouin. Oh, saved! The goalkeeper will pick that up and set it back down court. And uh, Biro having an excellent game in goal, frustrating the French for now. Not a great shot by uh, Boudouin. Into the wing. And, uh, Eglon pushed off over the hoardings. Normally a right back, but uh, as I said earlier, they've only got Provencier playing in her first major competition as a right winger. And so have uh, relied on uh, Eglon quite a lot. And Cissé to play in the wing. Oh, good save again by Biro. Despite being short-handed, the Hungarians forced the uh, French into a long-range shot without any power whatsoever by Nyombla. Patience, clearly not one of her virtues. They're taking out their goalkeeper, meanwhile, the uh, Hungarians. And so in comes Tot with the uh, goalkeeper's bib on. The tactic with the Hungarians is the same all the time with the uh, extra player that comes on in these cases. Start at the left back, go into the wing, and that uh, lost a balance, unfortunately, for uh, Kovacic. Burns come back into the wing, but that's not a very good pass. Iglon does well to just retrieve it and send it out, and France slow down. It's not a gear they've managed to find too often, especially when they've really needed it. That uh, slow, steady looking for a pass to the line, comes off the foot of Tomori, it's accidental, just a free throw. Oof. That goes wide, and again their shooting's uh, going off. At one point it's 72%, at half time it had gone down to 64 for France, and now it's at 57%, Alain Porte's team getting a little bit rash again. Coming up to three minutes played, no goals in the second half.
Free throw. Todd brought down. Suspension as well. So Alice Levesque gets some marching orders after only being on court for just over a minute. Space in the wing, oof, and uh, Boudouin's dead legged. Tried to get across. Well, she uh, actually checked herself at the point of impact, but uh, more worryingly is the Kovac she stepped on her foot and may have turned her ankle, both of them coming off badly. So Kovac has uh, left ankle, and uh, Boudouin, I'd say. Uh, one of those very tight calls about whether Boudouin was on the move at the point of impact. Here's some of the actions from earlier in the game. At half time, both teams a little profligate with their attacks. Hungary only successful with 43% of their attacks, while France 50%. We see some anxious looks on the bench, especially, oh, that's bad news, and her ankle. Turned, unfortunately, she stepped on Boudouin's foot, and uh, the sad sight of Kovacic being helped off court, and it means Bordi will be pressed back in on the uh, right wing. Meanwhile, Kovacic steps up, uh, Tristuk rather, steps up to take the penalty. Four from four so far in the game for her. And she scores her fifth penalty. Seventh goal overall. So Tristuk brings Hungary back to within two goals. And France just as in the first half, taking a while to uh, get going here. They're still short-handed, remember. Oh, and another save by Biro. It goes off to the side, it's a throw-in for France, but they've had a string of opportunities, France, wasted. Lacrabert did well to find her. Just had to drop it in under the keeper, again it was rushed, the shot. And another save! Biro seems to be unbeatable for France. Eight saves in the game. Four of them in the second half in just four and a half minutes. Tomori pulls it back. Ball stolen, but Tomori fouled in the process by Kanto. She gets a free throw. A few more seconds before France are back to full strength again. Bulat Tomori. It's a goal. They're back within one. Five minutes played. French hoping that would be a, an attacking foul. She did clatter into the defender. But uh, she was still moving at the point of impact. Beats Lino. Team timeout France. Vous savez ce que je vais vous dire. Tutelle a les quatre fers en l'air. Faites-le rouler le ballon par terre. Elle est ridicule, cette gardienne. Elle fait que sauter. Faites-le rouler le ballon par terre. C'est pas compliqué, ça. On reprend des 21. Il va y avoir les solutions. Tranquille au tir, les filles. Tranquille. On se remet 06. Si c'est la grande à l'aile, là. Il va y avoir des Espagnols. Il va falloir sortir et impacter sur les croisés. Allez, c'est parti. Not a happy man. Tell you more about that in a second. And, uh, Dembele not happy either. Let's listen in to Nemet though. <laughs> 
Tehát azt, azt szeretném most, még mindig a befutók, akkor a hosszú, itt nem pötyi, hopötyi, ugye, hosszú pötyi, akkor próbáljuk meg sok mozgással, és akkor abból a befejezést. Two minutes suspension, Tomori has sent Iglo flying. Off goes Tomori. Well, the French coach in that team timeout was livid with his team, and he stood there and he said, you know what I'm going to tell you, don't you? And they all stared like naughty schoolgirls, and no one wanted to make eye contact with him. And he said, the goalkeeper's living in the air, and you keep on shooting high. He said, put it underneath her. And he's right. The wasted chances in the second half by France accumulating. And Biro who is coming out, star jumping a lot of the time. It's just begging for the ball to be dropped in underneath her. And yet France are trying to smash it in over the top. And Biro has got a 67% save rate. So France back at full strength. Now it's Hungary who is shorthanded while Zuzana Tomori serving a suspension. Oh, brilliant play by La Carbert, but Iglon not taking her chances. La Carbert makes amends. takes off and uh, Camto holding back Bulat. Second goal for La Carbert, who palmed a lovely pass into Eglon on the wing, but uh, she decided not to shoot. She's not a winger in fairness, it's a different style of play. She's a back player. Goalkeeper's out once more. Tot is on with the goalkeeper's bib. She'll run through the defense, come back out the other side and go to the bench. There's an element of predictability about the, uh, the tactic. You just need to make sure that she's not receiving the ball as she runs through. Other than that, they just let her go. Here she comes again. Palms off everybody. And they uh, try and time it so that as she goes around, they're driving in. Oh, Biro! And she's got the ball back. And La Carbert saying, I was completely free. You just had to give me the ball up front. Look at this. Trying to shoot into the empty goal. Biro running back in again. But she's palmed it from outside, so technically, as a court player, before she stepped back inside the area, and so it is a corner throw for France. Slow motion, look at it here, you'll see the contact was outside, and therefore, while well, she is a court player. So France keep possession, but La Carbert was saying, I was free, just uh, put it across to me. And once more, it's the wrong option by France, into the wing. Eglon, this time she scores. France get going again, they're doing it the hard way. So, Hungary are back to full strength again, but that suspension has cost them as France have managed to uh, get going again after a slow start in the second half. Two goals by Lacrabert and Eglon. See them restore the three-goal lead they had at half-time. Clever play by Lacrabert who pushes out in defence. It's going to be a free throw and a two-minute suspension as Zushansky goes flying and Dembele is sent off. Well... It's hard defending, there's no doubt about it, but uh, she technically didn't have her around the neck. It's physical, but the shirt tugging, evidently upsetting the Czech referees into the wing. Where Planeta, interestingly, is playing now as a right winger rather than Bodhi. Makes you wonder if uh, Bodhi's injured. Planeta, well, doesn't do a bad job as a winger. All 1 meter 98 of her, she's a right back, and Planeta pressed into play when Kovacic went off injured puts it straight into the goalkeeper's face not used in defense though the uh, right back just 21 years of age played 16 times for Hungary her first major competition and she's never been used in defense Pino Eglon, they're crowding the middle now, and it's helping the uh, Hungarian defence. Smack in the face for La Carbert. She looks to the referee with a bit of a smile, Samoranski. I think no, she may have got away with that, and passive play being warned. Well stolen 
They saw it coming, the Kempe. So France short-handed, get turned over. Boulat looking for the line, it's stolen. And watch out for the quick play. Oh, that was nicely done. And again, Biro saves. Lacabert seems to be the one clearing up France's mess all the time. And Biro makes nine saves from 15. And fair to say that Nyombla is going to get an earful from Porte, who said, put it low, put it on the ground. What does she do? She puts it high again. And he's absolutely right, Porte. She's constantly jumping. It's star jump. Left leg, right leg, but it's a star jump. It just needs to be rolled in, as you said, underneath. Well, Short-handed or not, they've managed to slow it down. That was La Crabert. And Eglon's got back in, pushes Boulat. Oh, saved, and for the second time in the game, Lino is down, smacked in the face. And it's the same player, Kovacic. It seems to have a grudge with her. Oh, dearie me. Oh, Nemet. opportunity missed and the uh, French players are clustered around uh, Pavel Valek, one of the referees. For Biro, 10 saves. That wasn't one of them though, Lacabert, one of the few players who stood out. Did well here, happy to concede the corner throw. But eventually uh, Iglon there scoring on the wing. France's uh, shooting efficiency has dropped by 11% since half-time. It's down to 53%. They're being uh, outscored now by the uh, Hungarians, 62% save rate. And so we pass the 10-minute mark in the second half. France at full strength as Iglo gets clattered into by... Uh, It's gone wide, not sure if it touched Biro. Lacabert feeds it in quickly. No, just a, uh, a miss. France, who arrived at these uh, European Championships without their regular right wingers, both injured, Blondine Dancet and uh, Audrey de Rouen, two very experienced players. Planeta in a more conventional back roll for the moment. Sails over the top, nothing given by the referees. The 18 year old comes away empty handed. La Cabert. So for France, Vas Zadi comes in. One of the newer members of the team, just 19 internationals, 21 years of age, the number 10. Plays for the champions, Mets. Zeminko in the middle, the ball's loose. Biro saying, uh, someone make yourself available. Saved by Lino. Ball's put out of play, doesn't touch the goalkeeper. And France get the corner throw. And again, he was... Uh, it needed a better pass than that, but that said, there probably wasn't enough of an angle on it anyway to get ahead of Zushansky, who was covering. Lacrabert is hiding in the wing, there's a play coming. Oh, and another two minute suspension. It's another foul off the ball by Kovacic. Well, she's pulling uh, Boudouin back, throws her down in the area, lets go as soon as she's got her down. And it's just so unnecessary. And there's always a bit of tugging and pulling and holding, but uh, 
and they start to try and dispatch them, then uh, the referees are bound to take action. Zadi off the post, picked up by the Hungarians, and an unnecessary shot with uh, Iglon waiting at the right back position where she swapped with Lacrabert. They say, well, I had a bit of a shot there, but in fact, her whole arm action was wrong. She just didn't get prepared at all for it. So the goalkeeper is out, and back on comes this time Temesh with the goalkeeper's bib on. She's going to do the line run in reverse. Team timeout, Hungary instead, comes up before. Second of the game for them. One more left for each team. Michigan. Rendben vagy, menj akkor vissza a bal szélre, jó? Akkor ott marad, kettes védő, középre megy a Berni, akkor most beálló, jobb átlövőben van a Simo, és akkor jobb szélen most jelen pillanatban a, a piros jobb szélső. És ebből most a, a, a te vagy a újrajöltő, és te onnan jössz, és abból mi jössz majd le. Hagyjál. So, he did the, in amongst all of that, where he seems calmer, remind them about the shooting. He said, you seem to have forgotten. Kovacic, so, the Giorietto left winger, brings them back to within one. Second half scoring has slowed down quite dramatically from where we were in the opening 20 minutes of the game. Boudouin, Zadi. They're trying to find Boudouin. Samaranski smiles, but uh, the referees see it clearly. So still 25 seconds before Hungary back to full strength. La Cabert. That's gone in. Nzeminko, her fifth goal of the game. And they're back to two in front. goal in the second half for her. Trying to uh, other than the uh, official last meeting between them in a major competition Euro 2010 in fact played the uh, Hungary in a warm-up match the week before the uh, Euro started in Jure it was drawn that game 22 all. How much they were trying to hide from each other at that point, I don't know. But as they started in uh, different halves of the draw, they probably have uh, been pushing it fairly hard. Maya on and scores. So impressive. Her second goal. And once more, Hungary back to within one at full strength. We've hit the midway point now in the second half. Looking for the line. Canto gets away from Bulat. She had to let go. It would have been a two-minute suspension had she held on any longer. She was inside the area as well. And Canto beats Biro. Bit of pace. Oh, nearly uh, losing it. Oh, tipped by Lacrabert. She retrieves it before it goes out of play. The ball intended for Trischuk, but uh, the lob pass intercepted. So Pino is back on again. Not for long. She's been used in defence. Zadi Comes back on again, 21-year-old from Metz.
Oh, and Zeminko looking ahead before she got control of the ball. Classic error. Shot comes in, it's saved by Lino, but the foul on Zushansky gives a free throw for Hungary. So Planeta in the attack now as a right back. She does tend to go always towards the middle, so they know they can defend and push up. Here she goes again. Doesn't tend to go straight. Oh. Lovely low shot, Tristruk. Her eighth goal of the game through the defense. Six four, the scoreline in the second half here in Budapest. Zadi, free throw. She's blocked by Zushansky. Good defence, they're pushing out and uh, nothing given. I thought that uh, it was a foul on the centre player, but uh, not seen by the referees. It's not uh, judged that way by the referees. So into the centre goes Temesh, 28-year-old, actually plays in uh, Germany for Metzingen. That was nicely spoiled by Eglon, who went out and uh, saw the crossover coming, got in between. Planeta again goes towards the middle. Oh, stolen. It was red. They knew she was going to run that way. And finally, they're listening to the coach. Nzeminko bounces the ball in underneath. Planeta constantly running that way. And the uh, French player is able to uh, go out and cut the pass. And again! Tristruk. Ninth goal. Out of Hungary's total of 20. Haber, Zadi goes early, oh, can come back in again now. Ah, oh, unlucky, a slip by Kovacic, and uh, Zadi quickly checked her, her back run and went straight back in again. And the defender, Tristruk, was left with a choice, either push up or stay with the line play, and she was right in the middle. Temesh, she got a free throw. Mehmet. Seeing his team constantly come back at the uh, French, but uh, not uh, managed to overtake them. Tough defending again by Iglon, who stops Temesh. So, ten minutes remaining. Planeta, well... If Tristra's going to do it, she wants to have a go as well. Passive play, ticking away. But at the moment, it is down to these individual actions by the uh, Hungarians against a flat defence. So, nine and a half minutes remaining. Zadi, Dembele. Oh, looking for the line, but that was a big bounce pass and a chance here to level the score. It's all square. Kovacic beats Kloser. And the crowd are in ruptures. Third goal for her. Kloser, who's come in for Lino. Fast break goes France, two for Hungary, but good defence pressuring the French. And a save by Biro. It's 
been a while since the last one. That's our 11th. And suddenly, the Hungarians' tails are up again. Comfortably read by the 20-year-old. Planeta just couldn't quite get going again after the gap opened in front of her. So, Hungary winning the last uh, official international between these two teams four years ago, the Euro. A draw three weeks ago in a warm-up game in Jure after France had arrived, ready for the campaign. Oh, good play by Mayan, hammered away! by Kovacic, who's hobbling away on the wing. She had her ankle patched up. And they've taken the lead with a 3-0 run, as France call a team timeout. Celebration for Biro. It's going to switch, it sounds like, to 5-0-1 with Dembele at the front, marking three strokes. Attacking foul won't be given. Kamto taking the ball short of the uh, defender. She didn't roll off her. Well, there was enough contact that she was held initially, but it's because she was falling backwards before that. Well, Nods is here. Great uh, Hungarian handball player. Been there and done it. Today, able in the handball arena to come and watch instead of uh, taking part in the action. And Alain Pot has got a yellow card, not happy with the call against the line player. There have been a couple of uh, unlucky calls against them, I guess, in the uh, first half, but these things happen. The problem is, when you're losing, it always seems worse, doesn't it? Seven minutes remaining. Hungary lead by one. Attacking foul. La Claber trying to roll the defender off there. But be careful because they get so worked up sometimes, the French, they charge in and give these attacking fouls. The clock has been stopped. Not quite sure what's going on, but... Uh, one of the officials, Monica Hagen, the EHF supervisor, has called over the referee. Abel Valek in discussion with her. I wonder if it's a faulty substitution or... It should be a fairly easy discussion. Well, it, it probably is a faulty substitution. Maya looking a little bit uh, sheepish on the bench. And uh, is it that Temes went in too quickly? So, a faulty substitution hands a bit of a lifeline to the French. Well, uh, Nemet doesn't need to explain other than just to tell them to be careful when they're doing these substitutions between attack and defence. 
Nothing more can be done about it now. He says, go and sit down, take your break, and we'll uh, try and salvage the situation. So, France. Will we see it now on the left? Yep, there you go. Seven attacking players. Oh, and a bit of a gap for Iglou. They've levelled it. Iglou's second goal. So, short-handed defence with a little bit of space, but uh, helped by a nice little turn by Iglou on Kovacic. Still, though, the Hungarians outscoring the French. Some percentage success rate. And we've got an individual uh, defence going on at the moment. Well, Maya throwing herself back in on Kanto. And I think that's a harsh decision. Because uh, immediately when she got the ball, Maya backed into her. You might have said, OK, well, we'll give the free throw. We may see it better from this angle. She gets it. And look, there you go. I mean, Maya, all 87 kilos, throws herself back into Kamto. And that's not going to help uh, Alain Porte's disposition one little bit. Both teams are short-handed, and France go for a 5-0-1. Back in to a 5-0. They have to, they were trying to individually mark uh, Tristchuk. Ah, oh, brilliant! Tristchuk, who must surely be in the hunt now. For the player of the match award for her team, even ahead of Biro, I would say. Hammer shot as she got away from a marker. La Crabère! Ah! Oh, Tomori has caught La Crabère on the way through. And it's another two minute suspension this time for Susanna Tomori. Grabbed her across on the other shoulder. There you go. And just a little slap on the right cheek. So all happening here is we come up to five minutes remaining in the game. So Boudouin has been uh, France's better penalty taker. Nine from 12 in the tournament. Takes it quickly. Straight through between arm and leg. Good one's first of the game. It's all square. So goalkeeper's out. And it's Zushansky with the goalkeeper's bib now to uh, level the numbers. And France are also short-handed. Right, Hungary have one of their two suspended players back now. Bulat looking for the line, but Maya is back. Oh, Tristchuk got free, but defender got a touch on it. Took the sting out of it. And another terrible pass by Lino. Twice she's taken the ball and all but handed it back to the Hungarians. And France once more in panic mode. La Cabea can only smile about it. They will have felt she was uh, being impeded from trying to cut back in, but... Uh, it was just such a poor pass. Kovacic stays in on the line. Bulat got a big shot, not when she's running in that direction. The ball's loose. And Zeminko. Well, she's still shooting high, but at least it goes in. The French fans are happy. Goalkeeper once more takes off, but instead of bouncing it. So a good steal. And uh, France back in front, and with the extra player, they individually mark in Tristchuk. Oh, well, Planeta rarely goes straight. She cuts towards the middle all the time. The first time she goes straight, and it pays dividends. Cuts back in. Took Iglon by surprise, and that's a nice finish.
Hungary back to full strength again. Three minutes remaining. It's all square here in Budapest in the fifth place playoff. France with big aspirations of a semi-final place, especially after winning all their preliminary matches, including uh, big wins against Serbia and Montenegro. Dembele trying to release the ball but couldn't control it, and instead now it's Hungary who break out. Tristuk! Planeta. Seems to be a little bit of a discussion going on between uh, one of the referees, I think Pavel Valek and uh, Lacrabert. Alain Porte wondering whether holding is a foul anymore in uh, handball. <laughs> yes. It's all in the gesture. Tristuk, Planeta. Oh, this time it's an attacking foul. And France are away so quickly. Lacrabert slams it into the top corner. A third goal, there was the foul, and while some of the uh, Hungarians remonstrated, the French took the throw quickly. 86 kilometers an hour, La Caber. it's all in the balance, one and a half minutes remaining. If it's tied at the end, it'll go to extra time, two times five minutes. Five fast break goals for France. One goal now would put the pressure on Hungary, if the French could steal it. Maya going in on the line. Planeta, free throw. The foul on Tot by Iglon. Into the last minute. Trying to release it, it's stolen. La Caber comes away in passive plays, being warned. The Hungarians need to take a quick shot. Team timeout, Team timeout last one for either team, for Hungary. 52 seconds remaining. So passive play being warned here, Hungary, time not with them anymore, he expected Planeta to come through, here she comes, it's a free throw, they'll put the wall up again, and the big shot's coming. That's come off a defender. It still stays with the uh, Hungarians and Planeta trying for all she could. It's still passive play. They've got to do it quickly. And in the end, they lose possession, and that's probably enough for France if they can just make this a long attack. Hungary can't stay back. They've got to go up. It's 17 seconds. You can't play a flat defense. Here they come. The French, though, prone sometimes to panic play, just need to keep their heads here. Get someone free all the time. They're going backwards, it doesn't matter, and they've done it. By the skin of their teeth, France take fifth place ahead of the host nation, Hungary. 26-25. Hungary made them work for it, but the smiles are back on the French faces after the disappointment of failing to reach the semi-finals. The French have beaten Hungary in Budapest. They drew three weeks ago in a friendly at the start of the tournament or just before. Planeta tried to get those last shots, but the French kept her at bay. And so disappointment for the Hungarians. It was so pleased to make it through to this playoff, to have one last match in front of the home fans. But it wasn't to be. 
France have won 26-25. So it's time for the best player awards here. And there we hear the statistics coming up. Well, we'll let you watch the uh, stats in uh, just a few moments when these formalities are over. Well, Ziminko's got it for seven goals. An 88% success rate. She only missed one shot out of her eight, which is a terrific rate. I think congratulations to Lacrabert as well, though, who did try and settle things all the time. And uh, when things were going into panic mode, was the one cool head. So Biro must be one candidate with 11 saves. 44%. Three strokes, 10 goals, including five penalties. Not enough because the goalkeeper was in blinding form, a 44% save rate, especially in that crucial phase when they started to turn things around. But disappointment for her, Zuzana Tomori tries to lift her spirits, but it's a rather blank face. But the 20-year-old in her first major competition gets her first MVP award. <laughs> Boudoir celebrating with the, uh, the French fans. So for Zuzana Tomori, who took over the captaincy from the uh, absent Anita Gorbitz. No success here as France have won 26-25 here. The stats, the attacks roughly balanced, a bit wasteful on both sides. On the shooting, it ended up fairly evens, 59% to Hungary, 57 to France. And Ziminko, of course, MVP award for her seven goals. Tristruk, 10, five of them penalties, was the best scorer for Hungary. Well, we'll let you view the rest of the stats here. We're going to be back at 1800 hours CET for the first semi-final, Montenegro against Spain. Hope you can join us for that. And then, of course, after that, it's the second semi-final, Norway against Spain at uh, 2030 CET. But for now, from me, Paul Bray, hope you can join us for the next match, but it's goodbye.